Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, uh, what is it, Tuesday? No, Thursday. It's the other T word <laughs> that starts with a week. Of course, want to be wishing you well on this lovely, lovely Thursday. I've just down another pound of ground beef, no coffee included. However, I'm feeling ready to go. And with Bitcoin doing a little bit in the overnight session, we can actually discuss some new ideas. So let's get in a live scene right over here. And as always, wish you the happiest, the happiest, the best, the best whatever good things you want in your life right now. I'm wishing that for you right here, right now. Bitcoin hitting once again the 89 exponential, formally uh, rejecting off it uh, almost immediately. Now, I was, not, uh, I was not awake to watch this happen in real time. I woke up probably right when the rejection just finished. So I woke up when price action was about 39.50. And, uh, and yes, I did take a position or I did add to a position on my main account. And my streamer account, I believe, is open a little bit lower right now, which we'll get to that in a little bit. But anyways, this to me is kind of what I'm looking for for the last sort of you know, hunt before likely a pullback right now. So yes, I actually am looking for a pullback. I believe that we have kind of filled up this whole formation uh, well enough. We do have all kinds of bearish divergences going on. I mean, hourly right here, right here, giving you lower highs in your RSI, lower highs on price action. If we go to the three hour as well, I believe that we have it even more pronounced. Yeah, you have one, two, three drives, which is usually, which is my favorite way of trading this sort of thing. Also below the exponential and also getting kicked out of the bullish control zone and, and coupled up with the fact that Stoke are crossed down after snaking around quite a bit. So that to me does make me more confident in looking for something like this. So where am I looking for? Well, we should actually also look at the four hour total time frame as well. Now, shouldn't we? Uh, same sort of thing over here, a little bit less pronounced on the uh, on the bearish divergence, but also on the jewel. The jewel, you know, this is not a perfect signal by any means. It's not even it's not even close to a perfect signal, but it does show that we are coming up into some major resistances as far as I'm concerned. Also with four hour stokes crossing down as well. You know, I do believe that we're probably going to be testing the, at the very least around low 3,800. Uh, how am I getting that and what am I looking at? Well, basically, you can make this very simple for yourself. Uh, you can do this with a nice Fibonacci retracement starting from the beginning of the rally. Let's see, where where, where would you say that the rally started from? I suppose right here. And we could just take this up to the top of the rally. And, you know, let's actually adjust this as that is. That looks a little bit more right. So I just want to get it on with the uh, with the, with the the four-hour total golden cross, which was the impetus for this nice impulse move. And look at that. You know, we do have the three the 382 coming in around low, low 3,800 now. Of course, it's pretty, you know, it's usually things don't, Usually things will retrace further, um, but because this was a pretty damn powerful move and based off of something that I do actually put a lot of weight on, um, I, I think it is I think it is actually possible that you that uh, that you only retrace to this area again the the, the low 3800 number now of course if things were to get a little bit more going I'd be looked down uh, I'd be looking down towards the 618 you know yes the 0.5 will come in as well but those are all the way you know in, in mid to low 3700 I think that's a little bit less likely right now but of course if price action does get down around there you know it is bounce potential so uh, so definitely worth mentioning and overall you can see that the rally sorry not only got rejected from the 89 exponential but if you do make a a nice ascending trend line. Sorry, this does not make too much sense on a three hour, but on perhaps a daily. Yes, indeed it does. You have this trend line running past our last couple highs throughout this consolidation period. And I actually do consider this, I, I, I really am starting to consider this as something new forming right here. You know, when people were looking at it like this, um, it was the right way to look at it at that point in time. But when we broke out, I didn't really get the reaction and the response as far as a volume metric goes, that is indicative of something completely new going on and the way that I want to see a pattern like that resolved I want to see the a pattern like that be resolved in a much more intense fashion we didn't quite get that I want to see more volume than what we did over here in fact the way that it's kind of situated right now you do still have that kind of nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right it's just now it's likely to take longer um, so for the time being I would be representing it like this with your overhead resistance right here and your rising support trend line coming in right over here what do you want to call us I mean it's some sort of triangular consolidation I don't care what the fuck you call it I only care about how you racked around uh, horizontal support and resistance now couple that up with the fact that we also hit the 236 Fibonacci retracement off of this off of this guy and also you know some nice horizontals in this area as well as the 89 and uh, I believe some volume profile action coming in around this area as well yeah it's kind of like our last our last stab or last stack of high value nodes um, you know likely likely to have likely to have some action around this area not only that but I do want to point out this as well and this is very unique because Bitcoin land it just makes things <sighs> Bitcoin land is just is unique in the way that 
sometimes you just say, God damn it, <laughs> because look at this right over here. Uh, Finex actually came up all the way to test the 200 exponential on the weekly. Now, credit to Pena for pointing this out to me because I actually was glossing over this uh, during the morning. And, and overall, we do not see the same sort of behavior on the other spot charts. We only see this on Finex. Why is that? It's because Finex had a tether premium, like a severe tether premium for you know a few months um, back over here. So that really will kind of adjust all of the um, all, you know all you know all all of your readings for these sorts of things. And because it still does have a little bit of that tether premium, its price action is more advanced than what we're doing over here. In fact, I believe it's actually grown a little bit as it is trading 40, 30, uh, more than $100 above spot right now, which it was I, I believe is considerably less before that. Um, it was, I think it got all the way down to about $50. So it oscillates within that, which is very fucking annoying because now we have two moving parts. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like charting things versus Bitcoin, because now you have like two very violent assets, a very volatile assets, uh, you know, trying to you're, you're trying to like figure out what the relation is between them two. It's like maybe it's better to just do with as many constants as possible, which Yes, that would be a counterpoint to what I'm saying right now. But with Finex also hitting this 200 exponential, we do have a significant amount of resistance coming around this area. And uh, and overall, this has been governing our lower highs ever since we got into this more aggressive downtrend. So yes, I still do stand by, by, by what I said that as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly dildos below this 200 exponential, I don't really have any reason to believe that, that Bitcoin is out of the bear market. But I'd also add the caveat for that statement. I would want to see it done on one of the spot exchanges like Bitcoin stamp gdax um you know whatever it might be because they're going off of us dollar whereas this one's going off of tether so tether you know floats around just to kind of put it in perspective uh i wonder if tether's actually trading around on on Kraken right now um doesn't look like it on Kraken. or actually yeah a little bit it actually did come it actually did lose the dollar pegging uh all the way down to almost 99 cents hey so that's uh that's concerning. <laughs> See, this is the problem with Tether is that you never, you're actually very rarely ever just $1. In fact, in the last three, four months, we were literally at a dollar pegging for a couple of days, it looks like. Maybe one, maybe a couple more over here. So maybe four days out of four months. Um, but, but you know, we got down all the way to about <laughs> 85 cents down here on this wick and maintained well below 90 cents for, you know, a couple of weeks. And then over here, we maintained above $1 for, for quite some time. But even during then, it's not like, it's not like the price on Finex came down below spot prices it was actually still above so something very strange is going on with finex i'm not really sure what that's all about i'm sure it's it probably has something to do with like the extra fees that you have to you know incur when you're dealing with tether but then again it's like okay well then what's the real value of this thing right um anyways uh when you're looking at tether right here again you know losing losing the dollar pegging once again down around 99 cents which is a little bit concerning um okay so let's go look at uh what else do we want to look at let's go look at the longs and shorts of it all uh longs and shorts basically maintaining the same posturing that we saw yesterday uh longs adding a little bit uh 26 and a half thousand open longs versus 20,000 open shorts the big news with this is that the shorts are starting to gain interest once again and because it had gotten deep and down and dirty into this red box territory down around here which is where you know each and every major dump uh, of the last year has actually originated from i am certainly on alert mode and with bitcoin coming up to a major resistance and now finally getting that you know that rejection i was looking for it does offer up the potential for a trade, right? Mm -hmm. So looking at this, um, just to kind of put it in perspective, going all the way back to real, well, really, you know, February of last year, you had your February double top, you know, at the at twelve thousand, coming all the way down to six thousand. Then this was your March highs over here, where where was Bitcoin in March? I don't know. Uh, maybe, or sorry, that I think that was your twelve thousand double top right there. Sorry, uh, apologies about that. Wrong timing on that one but but into this zone for the first time then you had your may top right over here that was you know down to ten thousand or sorry all, all the way from ten thousand to six thousand then you had another dip down into the zone as well in the late august sorry early august uh, dump from eight thousand to six thousand then we had another spike down here in mid-november which was you know the move from six thousand to three thousand keep in mind that we actually got lower on the shorts on the cumulative shorts than we did on you know in in november before that major dump and kind of in the same fashion as well where it's just slinked down like immediately and uh and now we're finding you know a little bit of interest once again so that that is that is of great interest to me because because historically speaking, it has that much relevancy. Couple that up with the fact that longs are around this 26 and a half thousand marker. Uh, funnily enough, longs were literally right here at 26 and a half thousand uh, during that middle of November area where 
shorts got down below 20,000 and initiated that dump. So we actually have the exact same ratio and we are in the exact same actual total numbers as well, although price of Bitcoin is much lower. Uh, there could be some arguments against that. However, again, when we're talking about, you know, margin funding pools on Finex, that is something that is a little bit more constant than not because, you know, it's going to be, it's coming out of the pool. It's not just like it's it's every fucking coin available. It's, it's not really comparable to to total overall volume because it's not going to account for, you know, you know, spot selling and spot buying and all that good stuff and, and you know, hodlers as well, right? So again, just kind of uh, getting out that, uh, that out there. But yes, we do have something very interesting going on right now. Uh, let's also get on over to the GBDC. I'm, sure, I'm curious what GBDC did. Uh, uh, GBDC actually closed the day up. We had a phenomenal. Oh my god, this is this is just such a weird chart. I mean, this is what you get on OTC bullshit. It cut. You know, this is your open right here. Uh, sorry, this was your open yesterday. Comes all the way down to the 21. Immediate buoy up, and it looks like it wants to test this area once again. It really does. So. You know, with spot charts kind of hitting a major resistance, I'd kind of equate that to this uh, this horizontal right here at 488. So as long as we're closing below 48, or you know, maybe be a little bit more lenient with it, as you kind of have to be with uh, with OTC, um, maybe even 490. Uh, as long as you're below that, you know, it's still still questionable, still still kind of looking for a pullback more than likely. But again, remember these things take time, so that's why I always want to you know temper what I say by saying. First things first, not as financial advice, but not a financial advisor, but also understand that these things take time. So when I talk about an idea, you know, it can take, I, it can take days, sometimes even, it depends, you know, what time frame we're looking at, but it can take a long time to really formulate. And you're getting, you know, you're probably gonna get a full on uh, visual, visual confirmation of that pretty damn soon. Now, I mean, of course, it could also be the, it could also be the case that we actually close above 30, um, or sorry, this four, this $4.90 region first, and then probably have a run towards your prior high at, or sorry, it's towards this high over here at five dollars and five cents, which would put you know spot charts where that's what that would put spot charts probably around forty one hundred. Um, actually, to just go back on over here to to Bitcoin to Mister uh, Bit Mexican chart, uh, yeah, I'd be looking for a move somewhere towards this forty fifty to forty one hundred ish range. Um, also, keep in mind that that forty one that sorry that forty fifty area does line would line up with a measure move from this sort of uh, this sort of well what do you want to call this? I mean, if you're bullish, you're looking at this as some sort of an ascending triangle, and you really don't want to see it break uh, thirty nine ten. If you're bearish, you're looking at it as some sort of a rising channel or or an ascending broadening wedge. Now, which way is the right way to be looking at it? I mean, you actually do have a lot of markings of this being an ascending triangle, uh, but again, this is why I say don't listen to my opinion. There there's a very easy and obvious trade staring you in the face right now. And I'd imagine that the next move outside of this area is probably going to actually break because we're getting really full within this uh, formation. But basically, if you're bearish, I'd be looking for a break below 3,900 and it is rising. So yesterday it was 3,880. Now, now we can make it all the way up to uh, 3,900, we could say. And for the upside, I'd be looking for it for at least an hourly total close above uh, 3,950. Now, of course, on this last rejection, you'll see that both these dildos actually closed uh, two, you know, a couple ticks below uh, 30, uh, 3,950. So again, that is the area of interest for me. That is where the battle is likely going down. Now, my opinion is that is that we probably do break this onto the downside and initiate a uh, initiate a correction, probably down around here, 38, 30, something like that. And I do think that that's coming. You know, I you know I do think that that would be coming. You know, sooner rather than later. Um, but uh, but but keep in mind this does have an apex. Technically speaking, um, where would this be? Somewhere around here, actually. Uh, you know, so, uh, somewhere around tomorrow. Or sorry, no, it, it would be end of day today. Yeah, it'd be end of day today. So this this thing's pretty damn full. When these things get about 69% full, they can burst at any given moment in time. So again, looking at something like this, I would be, you know, do, do be cognizant of that. If you are going to take a position, you know, I, I really think it's just better to to wait for confirmation on this because it's really not going to take too much longer, right? It's really not going to take too much longer. I mean, if you want to play support and resistance, that the time to do that was was all over here. Once you had actually formed this, you know, you had a couple of trades, uh, a couple of shorts for, uh, right here, right here, right here, right here. So you had four trades up there and then you had one, two, three, four. You could even save a, a small scalp right here for five, although I, I don't think that that's really worth it, um, especially after a rejection like that. I mean, you have a Darth Maul dildo right here, a very powerful Darth Maul dildo, albeit not on super high volume or anything like that, but coupled this up with the fact that, you know, all of our lower time frame stokes are starting to turn. I mean, our hourlies were rejected from getting into the bullish control zone. The two hour stokes just turning right now. Three hour uh, just snaking around, but looks like they want to go down. Four hour um, getting continuations down, and I believe we just closed the 
eight hour, which are which are pointed down now as well. I do I do believe that we that we're in for that we're in for correction. Um, rather than continuation first. But hey, don't listen to my opinion. Look at the technical analysis. Look at where those levels come in around. Understand what changes the picture. And if 3950 is taken out, if 3950 is closed above, then I'd be looking for a move to, you know, 4050, uh, maybe even 4100. Test, test the 200 exponential on the spot exchanges uh, formally. Uh, by the same token, if it breaks out to the downside, the first area they look towards, again, 3830-ish, uh, you know, give or take a few bucks. Again, I'm not going to be super surgical with these sorts of things because you can't be perfect with, trading it's 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 not like that um anyways let's go check out uh mrs litecoin she was the one that was whoa hey mrs litecoin having a big down right there jesus christ man red dildo party beginning but she actually did close above that purple 200 exponential moving average now here's what i've been saying i've been saying that as long as as long as mrs litecoin is both opening and closing daily dollars below the 200 exponential moving average it's not really it's from a more traditional stance it's not confirmed to be out of a bear market but it actually has closed just one part of the equation above the 200 exponential so so what happens now i mean we are kind of seeing some actual sell pressure mounting and we do have some nice bearish divergence on the four hour we have one two three stabs i mean usually three strikes you're out uh what about six hour do we have it do we have it multiplied on there yeah we do we have the same sort of bearish divergence what about eight hour eight hour still got two uh two stabs what about ten hour same thing. Um, so again, I would be careful with this. It does look like it wants to retrace as well. I'd be looking for a a uh, a, a, a retracement back around to this area around uh, forty seven dollars, forty six fifty, somewhere in this zone right here. Again, the party's not over, and, and technically speaking, I am seeing a lot of things that say that this rally wants to, at the very least, come back down. Uh, but keep in mind, the daily dollar needs both open and close above the two hundred exponential on the daily, which it has opened now. Now we need to close above, and there's a lot of hours left of the day. So while while there might be retracement back down around to this area i would you know if it does close back above that 50 50 ish area or let's actually just confirm exactly what that number was um yeah it was 50 or sorry it's now coming in at 50 uh, 44 if it actually does close above that area then you know that would be that would be my moniker now here's the thing mrs likewin's the only one who's doing something like this and what do i mean by doing something like this i mean getting back above the the support trend line that that it basically broke on the way down you know on on, on the way down over here from your september october november uh consolidation pretty much every chart looks very similar to something like this where you had this ascending triangle going on right here and then we break down and Go all the way down into this very, 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 very aggressive red dildo party. So again, um, the fact that only Mrs. Litecoin is doing this and it does seem to be some sort of event-driven type thing does make me on edge. But as far as technicals goes, that's what it would be saying. So I don't trade Mrs. Litecoin. I don't care to trade Mrs. Litecoin. There's not enough liquidity in it. And I just, I don't really, it, who gives a fuck? Um, but understand that if you are trading this right now be aware of these sorts of things you do have all your higher time frame stokes starting to turn around i think all the way up to the 10 hour yeah the 10 hour did just turn down not confirmed just yet but will be confirmed in an hour i think 12 hour very very likely to be confirmed on the next tick as well but still another three hours for that so i'd be careful here yes you did get the 12 hour dildo golden cross which i do put a lot of weight on but at the same point in time i would not rule out a move back down to test these lower levels first and uh and then keep in mind where it closes end of day uh, I'm curious what the weekly looks like on this guy. Yeah, weekly weekly looks good. I mean, there's there there's no big red flags on, as far as the weekly goes, or at least as far as I'm concerned. But uh, but hey, if we can close the weekly above about 52 or so, that would be that would be kind of no questions asked as well. I, I know some people will be looking at 54. You know, fair enough. That'd be the more conservative way of doing it. But the weekly actually does have plenty of room to roll. I believe you got your weekly stokes just you know very 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 erect, getting all the way up here, and uh, we have the same thing with our weekly RSI, which is actually just getting out of the bearish control zone for the first time into the neutral zone since literally May of last year. It's 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 almost been a fucking year. I mean that's that's pretty intense man i'm curious though if we can look at litecoin mrs litecoin on a different exchange and see if she had the same sort of reaction i'm gonna go over here to bitstamp and see did she close above the daily 200 she did she did actually a little bit more healthily so uh, almost all the way at 52 dollars and your 200 exponential is coming in around 50 dollars and 11 cents here so yeah again i'd still wait for you know end of day i want to see i want to see both an open and close above there but definitely more good things and bad things going on in this guy or this this nice girl did I just assume her gender? I'm sorry, Mrs. Likewin. I'll call you whatever gender pronoun you prefer. Please don't sue me. But hey, keep that one in mind right there because it, it it's very suspect when you have one coin 
doing this and no other one doing this. I mean, yeah, I, I do know that BNB is doing this, but BNB is kind of a different, I don't really put it in the category, uh, in the same categories of the things, just, you know, it, do, it does its own things. It, it, it's, it's been consistently doing its own things, but for the most part, all the other top mark cap coins, they trade together. And with Mrs. Litecoin the, being the only one who's doing this right now, I would be very, you know, <laughs> uh careful uh, i'd be very very careful is what i'm trying to say i'm curious if the cme futures are showing anything that we're not seeing on spot charts right now um not really funnily enough we're kind of in no man's land as far as the cme futures go i mean i, I suppose you could say that we do have a horizontal coming in from right here uh, and we've ta taken one two three stabs on that and i do think that we're probably gearing up for you know for retracement here 12 hour looks like a rejection uh if we can just get back down below 3905 on uh, on cmes then that would look like continuations uh, what about 10 hour 10 hour same sort of thing um again you know but you know all this to me looks like it's getting a little bit tired 10 hours 10 hour stokes not necessarily coming down just yet what about the eight hour curious about these guys uh not confirmed down either not confirmed down either what about the four hour four hour coming down so yeah i mean this it's being very resilient right here being very resilient but you can see the four hour 377 actually holding everything back and that's all the way at uh basically 3980 so again um you know this four hour deal to golden cross very powerful very fucking powerful again that was you know put in let's let's kind of do the daily grinds on this uh this four hour dildo golden cross have, has given us a quite a potent move about 12 percent from bottom to top now formally uh in the span of let's actually do this right in the span of uh, uh almost four days almost four days we could call it. it'll be four days on the next tick now the last time that we actually got a four hour dildo golden cross was right over here where bitcoin had a pretty damn strong response as well well and a very and, and uh or i mean i wouldn't say i wouldn't say a strong response this is actually more of a weaker example uh only nine percent off the lows or a little bit less than nine percent and within five days or on the fifth day this thing actually did start to turn down so again on the weaker side that's kind of what i'm looking for this is a very strong example of a four hour dildo golden cross and uh going over here this one lasted about two weeks it looks like and almost and got up to about 25 percent from from bottom to top so you know we can kind of get an idea of of what is to be, uh, you know, what to be looking for as far as this goes. Now, of course, the time before that, another good example of one, um, you know, we could go over to the to the high right over here. This was your 10,000 high in May. And what do we have? You know, 25% gain. Uh, not bad. Definitely not bad at all. And in fact, um, we have this one going over about 19 days, we could say. So, you know, 19 days, two weeks, and then five days are the, are, are the last few examples. And this is the last example that we've had in the bear market. Um, and, you know, a 13.5% gain. Another kind of weakish one right here, I'd say. Definitely on the weaker side. And... You can see that this one also took about five days or so before, you know, before the red dildo party began as well. So what is my point? My point is, is that, you know, I'm not saying that it has to do exactly this in exactly this amount of time. No, not at all. But keep in mind that as far as, you know, relative strengths goes, this four hour dildo golden cross is historically on, I would say, um, Historically, I'd say it's on the uh, it's it's on like the more strong side. So expecting it to end anytime soon, I think is actually a little bit un uncalled for. I do think that we get some more tries higher as you know over time. I do think that we get some more tries higher. But keep in mind, keep in mind that this can also probably take some more time as well. We're just coming into the fifth day now, and for the more strong ones, they typically take you know two to three weeks. So again, another week or so of this, um, you know, where can price action get within that time? I mean, that's anyone's fucking guess, right? There's no way to know something like that. But just to put in perspective, if we did do, you know, like a 25% gain, as we saw in the last couple more strong ones, uh, that would put Bitcoin like quite literally all the way here at around 4450. Now, 4450 also an area of interest just because that is where probably I think your daily probably have some sort of daily resistance coming in around there. Nope, we don't. We have nothing coming in around there. No, we do have the weekly. That's what we have coming in around there. The weekly 21 exponential would be coming in right here at about 4450. Actually, exactly, which is, you know, funnily enough, I believe also the measured move off of the small or sorry, the the uh, what do you want to call it? this triangular formation that we put in over the last three months over here. Sorry, if I'm uh, I'm just going to re-represent it like this. This is what we were looking at uh, for the last three months. And that's what broke. Uh, what was it uh that was earlier this week yeah holy shit man time flies um but basically we do have the same sort of measure move uh whoops oh you bastard 
you bastard. Let's do the rewind and let's grab this guy and fit him over here. And you can see that, yeah, the measure move on this guy would actually be pointing right around there. So again, if Bitcoin does start breaking higher, I mean, keep in mind that that actually is on the table. We do have a way forward. So there, there are things pointing towards that area. Um, there has been ever since we broke out of this area. Again, I'm not really lean, leaning towards that happening to be, to be quite fair. Um, but it is, you know, it is on the t table possibility and there are, to be fair, there are things pointing towards there. You got the weekly 21, you got kind of an average of what the of what the four hour dildo golden cross can typically do. And then you also got the measure move off this baby right here, which again, I really hate playing bullish patterns in a bearish market, but to, you know, to put all the evidence forwards that, you know, th uh, that would be the full story. Although again, I'm not, I'm not really sold on that. I'm not really sold on that. Uh, again, a lot of the times what I see in bearish markets is, is what you'll see is, is a bullish pattern or, or a pattern will break bullish and then get faded. Uh, meaning, you know, it gets sold into as uh, that's, you know, typically what happens. So if Bitcoin were to kind of take, take a step above, I would still keep my eyes on the next couple of resistances right around 4,100. And uh, the next one, mm, the next one's, you know, technically 4,300. But at that point in time, I just say, yeah, you're probably going to get to 4,450 anyways, 4,500, whatever the fuck it is. Um, so again, keep your eyes on that. But as long as we are below this area, I will represent this consolidation as such, because I think it becomes very visually apparent on the higher time frames that we don't really have any sort of breakout volume on that last three day dildo. Uh, it's still within the context of this overall falling volume that you see going from left to right over here. Now, of course, as long as we're above the three day 21 exponential, I don't want to be like, you know, directional positional bearish. Uh, if Bitcoin gets down around here to the 21 expansion, which by the way is coming in where, you know, essentially low, low 3,800. So if we do come all the way back down there, I'd probably be a buyer or I, I am going to be a buyer at the very least. I'd have to close my shorts. Um, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not forced to close them already, but, uh, but Hey, that's what I'd be looking for down around here. You know, if, if, if that, if, 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 if we do get down around there, I'm always going to be, I'm always going to at the very least be closing shorts, but probably even maybe a small long, just, you know, the same long that I took on the four hour total time frame. I don't, you know, I don't want to like be taking fucking, you know, big positions. I really dislike taking longs in, in bearish markets. Uh, someone called me out on the, the other day saying, crown, you do take longs in bearish markets. Yes, I, I do, but I don't like saying that on stream and, and on video like that because I don't want to give like, it's not really the right, it's not, it's not really the way that I like trading. It's not really like the more, the more professional way of doing it because when you're looking at the overall market structure, I want to be going with the overall greater trend as a trend is your friend. And it'll just, it'll just increase your statistics by always going with that. So, you know, even on that trade, I got out of it relatively soon. I, I think I took the long at 3650 and then I got out at 3850, you know, and obviously we traded up about $150 higher. So missed out on a significant amount, definitely not perfect, but that's sort of my feeling on some, on something like that. I don't want to really risk it. I, I was just basically playing the four hour dildo golden cross, which I put a shit ton of weight on to be, to be quite honest. And in fact, if, and when that gets death crossed once again, I will become extremely bearish once again as well. Like, you know, as far as timing goes, uh, just like this pump up you see over here, you're likely to see a similar reaction on the way down. Uh, as you can see the four hour just coming back and testing the 10 simple, but looking, you're looking a little bit toppy here again, this is not a, it's not as, as huge of a, uh, uh, as huge of a rejection as a price action would look because look at the volume. It's actually kind of lackluster to be quite to be quite honest um anyways uh let's get on over and check out some more shit coins over here we got some mr buterols at 149 and a half let's see how he's doing we have do we have some bearish divergence on him i'm curious do we have higher highs right here is a real question uh closed 151 and, and 41 cents yeah so where do we close here no we do not we, we technically do not um, as, uh, as, as, as we actually did make higher highs here just by a few cents, but same sort of read on this guy, right? Four hour Stokes just headed down, try to give you a snake cross, but did not get it. Uh, three hours, um, three hours want, you know, looking like they're tired, looking like they want to come down eight hours coming down. We got our 10 hour yeah, coming down, but not too convincing. What about the 12 hour, 12 hour has is, is hinting at a cross down. That'll be confirmed in the next three hours and 13 minutes if we end here or lower. So again, you know, those next sort of pieces of the, of the puzzle is what I'm looking for. But once those happen, if and when those happen, then I'm looking for a price starts to come, you know, you know, likely uh, on Mr. Buterall, at least down to this uh, 143 and a half range. Uh, we can do the same sort of FIB uh, retracement that we did on Bitcoin uh, on Mr. Buterall, which by the way, Mr. Buterall hitting some, some major resistances as well. The top of this red box 
Fox territory, by the way, 156 perfectly. Jesus Christ, uh, he really does rep, uh, respect those pretty damn well. But you can see the 382 coming in right here. Yeah, again, that one, that 143 range. If that area doesn't hold, then yeah, then 139 and uh, 135. I think 135 would be a little bit more obvious if the if the 382 does not hold. I don't think the 0.5 will. But uh, but remember, you know, very similar setup on this guy as Bitcoin, and the fact that this one's a little bit more clear does make me a little bit more confident in Mrs. Bitcoin or Mr. Bitcoin coming down, uh, likely retracing a little bit as well. You know, hitting the two three six Fibonacci retracement, hitting this major resistance right here. I think that this is perhaps something on the daily. Let's go check. Let's go confirm that it's not. It's kind of in no man's land right now. Uh, weekly twenty one coming in hot pretty damn soon as well. But yeah, I'm trying to figure out where you know what else caught it. I, I don't think. Uh, I guess nothing else. Uh, so fair enough. You do have a little bit of bearish divergence on the 12 hour as well. So I, you know, usually going to see that play out for at the very least a little bit. And again, with all those higher time frames, Stokes starting, starting to turn. Yeah, I am. I am looking for a pullback. And as far as timing goes, I think, you know, again, it happens sooner rather than later, probably in the next like day or two. If it's going to happen now, of course, I can be 100% wrong. And that's why I say don't listen to my opinion. Listen to the technical analysis. And that's very clear. If Bitcoin closes above this area, this, this overhead which you could say, you know, 3950 if you want to be super surgical, but I'd even say be a little more lenient, say 3969, it's a better number. Uh, 4050 is the next one on the table, 4100, basically right around the corner. You know, go go over and test that 200 exponential on the weekly. Uh, by the way, the weekly, you know, the weekly doesn't show any signs of... You know, the, the, the weekly overall looks good um, as far as, you know, getting some more continuation on this rally. I mean, this is just a nice girthy and very powerful green dildo, just very erect pointing straight up. We got our, we got our weekly Stokes uh, crossed up as well the first time in a while. And uh, I think the weekly jewel is actually forcing its way out of here. So fair enough, you know, fair enough. Um, and and weekly RSI kind of just using the exponential finally as uh, support, but still in the heavy grips of the bearish control territory, actually. So again, you know, it's 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 one of those things have to be careful here because you might get a wick above the 200 exponential. And but remember, the big the big news is as long as they're both opening and closing weekly does below that 200 exponential. Got to be fucking careful, man. Uh, you know, it, nothing's changed as far as the macro goes. There's two big things for the macro. I mean, actually three if you really want to get into it. Um, but but the, but but the two ones that I like to describe right now are the weekly, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential. As long as you're below there, you know, just still as far as the macros, nothing's changed. Uh, if we go over here to the monthly, the monthly 55 is the next one is the next big one on the uh, on the table, and we have one week until the end of the month. I believe it's 28 days in February this month. Feel free to correct me; I might be wrong on that. But hey, if if Bitcoin does close above the green 55 exponential, it does not mean that the bear market is over. The bear market, as far as a monthly is, is concerned, will be over if and when Bitcoin opens and closes a monthly dildo above the the yellow 21 exponential, which is all the way you know a little bit above 5,000. But it would likely incite an extended correction uh, to the upside, and that can get drawn out for a lot more time, which means that this whole fucking downwards market, this whole sideways market is going to really, really drag on for, I think, a lot more time than most people consider. Again, the bullish people are going to show you, you know, dailies and weeklies and, and say that we're definitely going up. But of course, you know, understand those big pivot points that matter. And then I think it becomes very visually apparent when you're on the when you're on the monthly right here that uh, we have all, all we've been doing is just making lower high even on the monthly dollar time timeframe. I mean, ever since this area in July, your, your, your July high, just even the high, the like the, the high of it, they've all been lower. And each and every one, even this last one, as long as we are below 41.12, which was the high of, uh, of what was it, January, just another lower high. Now, if we do end this monthly dildo, and more importantly, if we do end this monthly dildo below 36.82, which we're currently about $200 off of uh, as far as price action goes right now, then that's the time when I get extremely bearish because I'd start to look towards the next target at around mid 2000s, about 2,500 down around here, this 89 exponential cyan moving average. So again, keep that one in mind. Obviously we're well and far away from doing that right now, but with seven days left to go, it is, you know, it is in the back of my mind because we've seen price, we've seen Bitcoin do some crazy things in price action. And if it does end below that moving average, that'll be the first dildo to both open and close below the 200 or sorry, the 55 exponential on the monthly. It'll be the first time it's actually been confirmed broken and likely to lead on to some very, 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 very nasty uh, price action. So again, keep that one in mind.
Uh, let's go check out. Uh, we can go look at a few more. Uh, I, I've actually enjoyed kind of looking at the other shit coins uh, really, really briefly. Uh, we'll go look at Zcash right now. Zcash rejection off the 55. Looking, this one looks like it wants to come down. Uh, Bcash, Bcash, and Zcash doing the same thing. Looks looks like a rejection to me, most likely. Uh, we got it. We got all of our higher time frames suggesting a little bit of exhaustion. I think nah, not. No, no bearish divergence on the on the daily, but some on the 12 hour for sure. Uh, what else, what do we have on Troners over here? Troner. Trying to do its own thing, actually. Uh, don't really have a strong opinion on this one. Don't have a strong opinion on this one. I mean, overall, as long as you're below three, uh, about three cents, really fucking bad. Uh, and this one probably, I'd say, wants to come down a little bit more. But I don't, I don't have a strong opinion on this one. If it, if we could see a retracement all the way down to about two point one, two point two cents, that would look that would, that would look a little bit better. Uh, Neo, Neo, finding resistance at the eighty nine, just like Bitcoin. Actually, creating a slightly higher high though. Creating a slightly higher high. Uh, oh, I guess I guess it's begun by this horizontal right here, which yes, I do put more weight on. So as long as you're below nine dollars and fifty cents, don't fucking like it. Uh, EOS, EOS. I mean, getting 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 much higher around there as well, but getting rejected so far from the two hundred exponential, two hundred simple. As long as you're below this four dollars and forty nine cent area, nothing's changed. What about Mr. Ripple's nipples? Mr. Ripple's nipples getting very sultry over here. Uh, using the fifty five as support right now, not bad. But Mr. Ripple's nipples just fucking wicks around so goddamn hard, man. It's really it's really difficult one to get. Uh, Twelve hour looks like he wants to come down a little bit. Do we have new lows on this? Yes, we do. Uh, I'd be looking for a bounce somewhere around the three one eight region, um, and I think that kind of covers it. For those ones, go check out traditional markets really quick as well as I like to check on my 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 old business essentially. And what are we doing over here? Made new highs on the daily. Made new highs on the daily. Again, this is why you know I know all the crypto anarchists are anarchists and all just the perma bears like Peter Schiff's out there in the world. All the people who want like gold and silver to fucking take over the world want this to fail because they feel like it, it it makes their their beanie baby worth more. Well, I I would actually argue I would actually argue the opposite. But first things first. As far, you know, I'm actually looking for for reversal in this as well. But the point that I'm looking at a reversal for this for is at around 262 right here. As you can see, it's nowhere near doing that. And in fact, again, as as stated during as stated, you know, coming into this week, the weekly looks fine. You just got a very powerful exponential moving average cross on this. I mean, yeah, you do have a lot of resistance at the 280 area, 281. But if this thing breaks above 281, there's nothing stopping it from the former highs. Uh I mean, as far as indicators go, there's there's no glaring issues. I, I mean, maybe there's some divergences on a four hour it, or, or even are there? There's not. There's actually not. I mean, maybe is there even on a two hour? Yeah, there is on a two hour. There is on a two hour. But again, uh, I'd put more weight on the higher time frames right now and 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 understand those levels. Uh, we are kind of in a rising wedge, rising channel, which is typically a bearish pattern as well. But again, until you actually break that to the downside, it's not fucking it's not the right time to play. And that and the support on this guy is coming in all the way around, you know, 250, 275, which we do have a nice gap down around here. So probably going to bounce it all, you know, if, if, if it were to pass right through. Uh, I'd be careful on this guy. I see like Mrs. Litecoin coming down a little bit more right now. Mr. Bitcoin is taking a stab back down to the to the low 3900 range. But let's see, can we actually break this level? Can we actually break this level? You can also see that the two hour 21 exponential is coming in right around here as well. I need some more follow through on this. We haven't taken out, taken out the low of the prior two hour dildo. So, you know, as, as always, I want to I want to be very adamant about saying waiting for confirmation, waiting for all these sorts of things, because I know it's fucking annoying, but that is the way real trading is done. It's more often than not, you don't really have to do anything. The only reason why I took a position on my main account is because I saw this rejection like literally as soon as I woke up the price action was around 39.50 so I took a position there or I mean added to my 39.60 short uh, essentially is what I did because I'm still short from 39.60 on my main account um uh, from I think yesterday's pump up somewhere over here, yeah, something like that, or was it was it over here? No, it's from two days ago. Jesus Christ, man, time flies. Um, so yeah, added a little bit more to that. But if we do break this area, this is where I look towards around thirty eight thirty once again. So I think that that's probably going to do it for today. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything. I feel like I did miss something, but maybe it's just because I didn't drink any coffee, and so I don't. I feel like I'm not firing on all cylinders. But that's okay, my friends. That's okay. Again, as always, it's an absolute pleasure speaking with you. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Again, the most important things we were aware of are the support right here, 3,900, and then the resistance right here, 3,950, 3,969, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I do think that, I, you know, if I'm putting my opinion on this, I think that it breaks down sooner rather than later. But hey, don't listen to my opinion. Listen to the technical analysis as that is the more, that is that uh, uh, that is the more obvious thing to be going off of. So that's going to do it for today. Again, I'll be back on later. Looking forward to see you there. If not, well, I'm wishing you well anyways on this lovely Thursday, and take care.